SMGs in the Division 2 have always been pretty darn good, and in 2024, they're really rocking. And Emeline's Guard is no exception, especially thanks to Project Resolve, which gave this thing a very, very nice buff. And if you don't know, now you know. So the Emeline's Guard is a named SMG, P90, you can put crit chance on it and crit damage, and it already has 50 rounds in the mag. And so it may look like it's missing a mod, but the mod's integrated. Anyways, when it comes to damage and RPMs, it sits somewhere between the MPX and the Vector. So if you like any of those higher end RPM weapons, then this one's gonna do it for you. It's got SMG damage, crit chances you would expect, and I like mine with damage targets out of cover. But what makes this thing special is perfect preservation. So. Before, Perfect Preservation gave you a total of 24% armor on kill potential, but now you have 30% armor on kill potential. So killing an enemy repairs 50% armor over five seconds with the body shot, but with the headshot kill, that's gonna improve it. It's gonna double it by another 15% a total of 30%. At the very least, you're getting 15% armor on kill over five seconds with perfect preservation, making it a weapon that gives you a really good head start when it comes to your survivability. So one of the reasons why I think SMGs are doing exceptionally well is because they pair up nicely with strikers, or at the very least, you have options. You can run Hunter's Fury, which is obviously a classic for SMGs and shotguns, but with SMGs, with certain setups, you can also run it with striker and what's nice about that especially with emily's guard is that it gives you a faster rpm which makes smgs just feel good in the first place but that's straight up dps on top of that you're going to get better weapon handling allowing you to lay more on the head and more accurately on the chest but also reload faster and this weapon needs that by default it's around two seconds which isn't the greatest reload for an smg but it's manageable so gear sets whether you're running striker or hunter's fury don't do a great job of allowing you to put on a ton of crits so amplified damage with smgs is a really nice thing to have both gear sets hunter's fury and striker do that for you but i decided to go with striker because i think that the rpm and the weapon handling is is really needed with this and also i didn't really need the 20 percent armor on kill so i decided to go with striker because i wanted to reduce the redundancy of what the weapon was bringing that 30 percent armor on kill and what hunter's fury brings which is 20 percent armor on kill 50 percent armor on kill is a pretty cool thing to have so don't get me wrong you could totally run that way but i thought hey you know what i'm going to take advantage of the all weapon damage buffs that striker gives and lean on my weapon talents for the most part to bring in that added survivability of armor on kill now in my opinion if you're looking to run and gun or play in the kill box with an aggressive play style, Style, then you're gonna want fast time to kill and fast time to heal. So we already have some of that, but let's go with the minimum armor on kill we're gonna get. Let's call it 15%. And so just by adding gunner, which you're probably gonna do anyways, that's another 10%. So right there between the gun and gunner, you have 25% minimum armor on kill. That's pretty neat. And then adding the Palisade Steelworks, you're gonna get another 10%. So that pushes you to a minimum of 35% armor on kill with a maximum of 50% armor on kill. And this build is not done as you can imagine that's a ton of survivability and really opens up the build to be super aggressive so when i have really good armor on kill on a build what i look to do is literally absorb damage in other words i'm not worried about taking damage because i know i have the kill power i'm confident with that so that when i get that kill i'm gonna get it all back and so let's talk more about defense before we get to everything else i'm running the memento now first off if you're running smgs or shotguns if you're gonna be in the kill box i just i gotta say it's just a really good idea to have bonus armor i mean you can do it with without bonus armor, but it's just so much more of a pain in the butt. You know, whether you're doing Bloodsucker or the Memento is up to you, but I like the Memento because it gives you more than just bonus armor and it gives you the extra cores. So we got a red, a blue and a skill tier. And then I put crit damage on mine. So every time we get a kill and then we pick up that trophy, we're gonna get another 20% bonus armor on kill because I'm running two blue cores. If you add that with our traditional armor on kill, we're at 70% effective armor on kill which is pretty darn good. But what's also neat about that is the memento, when you're at full stacks, you can get 3% armor regen. So you got that constant healing thing going as well. And then those blue cores are gonna give your shield a little bit of resistance. So notice I am running a standard Crusader shield. It's a three skill tier shield. That all being said, let's talk damage. So strikers is one of the strongest gear sets you can run in the game. We got weapon handling, rate of fire, and we're running 100 stacks of amplified damage at 0.65%. So what's really neat about strikers is it's a point and shoot thing, really easy. And let me tell you, 
if you feel weak running a four piece striker set whether you're running the backpack or not i don't know what to tell you guys honestly it's just you don't need to run the backpack it's great if you do it's great if you don't but it is just not required four pieces of striker wherever you put it you're good to go as long as you can get your stacks i got a uh, weapon damage and crit damage and one protection from elites uh mostly to protect the shield also a little bit for that bonus armor you could add more if you wanted to and then weapon damage and crit chance on the gloves the knees weapon damage and crit chance and then the holster crit damage all right so the chest piece is palisades for 10 percent armor on kill crits everywhere and then obliterate so just make sure you get your crit chance as close to 60 percent as possible notice i'm running this scorpio as a backup a really good backup so when you come against some very difficult targets such as warhounds or tanks or something you can just blast them with that just switch over and then i'm using the decoy on the other side you could run a fixer or whatever you like you could also run the banshee if you wanted to stun targets but either way it's kind of the same thing let's keep some shots off of our butt and that's what the decoy is doing stats we got 58 percent and 105 percent crit damage the armor on kill stat doesn't show the armor on kill coming from the weapon it's not calculated here and the armor regen is not showing the mementos armor regen so after playing with this build basically for hours felt like if i ended up loading it up with more armor which you could totally do because it was so strong then the memento would be doing so much work when it comes to additional shielding because every time you got a kill you'd basically be getting 1.2 million in bonus armor and you'd be stacking that that you wouldn't even need any more armor on kill and so we'd have this excessive amount of defense that i wouldn't be using and so if i decided to go that way i would have felt like i needed to change something and that probably would have been the gun and we don't want to do that why well this, the whole point of this build is to showcase emeline's garden it's really good so i decided to keep more damage and lean more into traditional armor on kill and less into bonus armor on kill that being said every time i get a kill a single kill i'm gonna pick up that memento trophy which is going to give me five percent more weapon damage per red core count those we got five red cores that's 25 percent more weapon damage so we are absolutely not missing out on any damage a single kill is a 25 percent boost and then when you have a full stack of mementos you're getting another 30 percent on top of that and you're constantly stacking the 25 percent. so it's gonna be 30 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 really easy to do because you're just cutting fools in half very fun build basically good to go with any content now this smg doesn't have the longest range now will it work for legendary got all the right elements for you just make sure you have the play style to go with it which is going to be aggressive and if you didn't want to run the memento and legendary for any reason then just go ahead and put on the striker backpack and then what i would do from there is run the picaro's holster so that i can get that little bit extra armor so the Emily's Guard, it's an oldie but goodie, and it got better. 30% armor on kill is pretty darn good. But you know what could make it better? If Perfect Preservation was on something that catered better towards headshots. SMGs aren't the worst, but they're also really good at taking down enemies extremely fast at center mass. So to pull into the head more is also inviting more missed shots, more reloads, longer time to kill in some cases. But if perfect preservation was on an assault rifle or a rifle or a sniper, boy oh boy, we would be making better use out of that perfect talent. And I noticed this is a trend with the Division 2. Whether it's a chest, a backpack, or a weapon talent, they put the perfect version of it on something that doesn't make sense, which in some cases negates the benefit of that perfect talent because of the sacrifice to the build you have to make in order to equip it with a useless attribute. Like for example, if you're running perfect creeping death on a status effect build, but now you have Habsburg as your backpack because that's what it comes with. But as far as Emily's guard goes, it's not the worst thing for perfect preservation. There's probably better and not necessarily the case for the Emily's Guard, but in many other cases where that perfect talent includes damage, I think what they're trying to do is prevent overpowered meta combinations. I mean, I wish we could put that on an assault rifle too. If we had some sort of perfect preservation on an assault rifle, that would be really nice. In fact, I use preservation for almost everything. I mean, I've put it on a FAMAS. I've put preservation on my snipers. It used to be actually my go-to for my snipers before Determined came out. Preservation was on that and my pistols, as well as my rifle, the 1886. I encourage you to explore preservation. Well, definitely don't ignore it. So when you have a build, like say a sniper build, 
build or a striker build and you got some really good weapon damage going on a really good time to kill then what else do you need well you have options but preservation is a good way to extend your performance if you play into it you can be just a little bit more aggressive with it and it's really cool when your weapon brings everything you need to the table so when it starts you off with a really good base of damage and heals so fast time to heal and fast time to kill there's so much you can do with your build i know we all love our ouroboros i do i know we all love our dark winter i do but i think emeline's guard is the next one you gotta run thank you for hanging out with me today my name is tuxedo bandito and this was another episode of the division two if you found this video helpful subscribe like and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in the division two and if you like builds like this check out the recommended build video i have here for you if you have anything you want to see covered be sure to let me know in the comments below and thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible tux nation wouldn't be without you I get it. Follow me.